whatever it is that you need to prepare for. Like Aldi. You got to prepare for Aldi. Bring your bags, bring your quarter. You got to be prepared for that sort of thing. What's up, YouTube? It's uh, time for another video from Prepare for It, whatever it might be. Today, we're going to do EDC. So a lot of times, guys will do an EDC video, and you won't you won't see it come out of their pockets, and they'll have all the same stuff. So you never know if they're actually carrying it. So I'm doing a pocket dump right now. Take a look at what we got here. Oh, hold on. This is important. Oh, yeah, I forgot something. All right. So I'm going to. Got a couple piles here. Start with the uh, the doozy. My EDC pocket knife. I've been carrying this for I don't know how many years. Um, I want to say at least five. I was looking um, looking on the YouTube's about the this knife, and there are reviews from it eight years ago. Um, I probably did get it when it was new. Uh, I bought it at a local preparedness store. For those that don't know, this is the Cold Steel Spartan. Briefly mentioned it in the other video, or my first video, uh, where I compared it to a saw. Too much, there we go. Um, I'm really bad about sharpening knives, so this is kind of dull. Um, I've tried to sharpen it several times, I just don't think I'm very good at it. I've probably changed the angle a couple times. Um, you can see that uh, I've banged it up pretty good. The, um, this is pretty loose after several years of EDC. Sometimes it falls out of my pocket makes a big thud, but uh, it's a pretty good knife. Um, it looks mean, it feels good. Uh, this replaced a Cold Steel X2 Voyager that I was given prior to my deployment. Um, so this is a little bit smaller, but it's way more practical as far as a knife. Um, you know, either as a regular knife, because the problem with the X2 Voyager is it's really long, so you can't do anything with the point. Um, and that one, the one I had was also serrated, which really sucked as far as sharpening it. So you can you can see here this has been beat to everywhere and back. Maybe you can see that in the camera. There you go. So mostly what I do with it is um, chop down trees and brush that get in the way, um, open boxes, you know, really anticlimactic stuff. Oh, and I show it off. Um, the only thing I've had to fix on it is this screw, is, I've had to put some Loctite in it. Um, I also modified the knife to give it a flat edge right here. You can see that it's a lot shinier here than that. So, than that. This was the color right here when I got it. And I'll show you why I did that here in a second. So this is a ferrule rod. Mm -hmm. The internet and preparedness's favorite fire starter. So, <clears throat> the way you strike on a ferrule rod is with anything with a sharp edge. Could be glass, could be plastic, um, could be the back edge of a knife or the spline of a knife. So I wanted the spline of my knife to be able to to hit this. So let's uh, do it this way here. And try not to catch things on fire. We can do it that method. And this is just an El Cheapo flint uh, or ferrule rod from, I think it was Amazon. I got like a five pack for, uh, you know, $13, which was cheap at the time. Uh, it's a couple inches long. The, you know, it turns black in my pocket, but most, <laughs> most of the striking I've done with it is just to show it off. And then you see that 
it does leave a bit of a mess on uh, on the knife. But uh, I've got this uh, tactical scarf right here, and bam, no more mess. Wait, a little bit of mess. There we go. Um, I like this lockback mechanism. Makes for a really strong knife. And you can see how much it moves, too. So I guess that's enough talking about my knife. And the ferro rod. Handcuff key. Part of a good sear kit and or plan. Uh, I want to get the double lock ones. You want to get all metal. Or you at least have a bunch of all metal ones. They do make plastic ones. Those are good to have. A quarter to call someone who cares. Nobody? Nobody? Nobody gets it? Maybe you get it. I don't know. But uh, no, I, I make sure to keep at least a quarter in my pocket. This way when I go to Aldi, I can get a shopping cart. Oh! Oh! It's not the end of the world. Yeah, that's right. Preparedness is not just about the end of the world, son. Sometimes you got to go grocery shopping, and you need a quarter. Flashlight. Um, I used to carry a high-speed tactical flashlight. Um, carried a lot of big ones, and then I got on the idea of, hey, why don't I get a small one with, you know, standard batteries? This way I can get them from work. So this is a Coast. It says HX5 in there. It's a black kind. Um, I had a silver one at one point. This black version will take a double A or some kind of lithium battery. And this is approximately 100 lumens on double A. Um, the cool thing is it's got this ability to move the lens back and forth. So if I want to beam or if I want to flood, I can do either. I usually do somewhere in the middle, depending on what I do. And you can tell I use the crap out of it because there's crap all over it. And there's stuff coming off of it. Oh, this one also has a combination pocket and hat clip. So you can... I have a way to show you. So you can put the cloth in here. Or you can put the cloth in here. So this would be the belt clip. Because it would sit... Not belt pocket. This would be in your pocket and then it would be this way if it was on your hat as an improvised headlamp. It's really cool. I like this double clip. Um, flashlight was 20 bucks at Home Depot, I want to say. Um, I was at an all, uh, Ollie's one time, it was a discount store, and they had a bunch of the silver ones for several dollars cheaper. Keys. This is my backup set of keys, so I keep these in my pocket all the time unless something happens. You've got a vehicle key, handcuff key, uh, it's a trailer lock, and then a house key. I've got um, blood type, second rarest blood type in the world, go me. Um, and it's just one of these things, which is pretty cool. But it gives you something to uh, hook on to. And it looks really cool. Lighter. You know, big lighter will be fine, but four burner butane is pretty good too. Uh, this is actually meant for a cigar. Um, and, you know, usually overkill is okay or better. Um, you can see it's been in my pocket for a while. And this has something to do with a cigar. I'm not entirely sure what, but whatever. Um, so the drawback to having an overkill lighter is there is lint that gets in there. And dirt and stuff, and so you got to give your lighter a blowjob sometimes. you got to blow out the top here and blow out the side there to get the lint out to make sure it runs right. But that's not, uh, you know, all that that much of a deal as long as you manage it. Um, it is refillable and I can adjust it with my fingers. I don't need a tool for it. Paid uh, ten dollars for this at a um, some kind of smoke shop. 
uh, lip balm. The this kind works way better than the twist chapstick because the twist chapstick will jam itself up in the cap and get everywhere and then you'll have none when you need it. And this one can't do anything. You know, there's a little bit of crud that gets in there. But uh, it'll be alright. This is a Raspberry Pi Zero. It just happened to be in my pocket because I was using it. We'll get more into that this and this channel uh, as time moves on. If you know what it is, that's great. Um, if not, then we'll take care of that in a later video. So this is my normal USB thumb drive that I carry with me. My normal EDC one. It's a USB on this end. And it is micro USB on this end. Because I use an Android phone, this will work in my phone. And then this is uh, an extra one I just had in my pocket because uh, I was printing something and had to take it to the store with me. Oh, I had two quarters. So I could have called two people that I cared. This is my improvised trauma kit. Um, well, it was not really improvised, but this is a basic, well, these are a basic trauma kit until I can get to my vehicle. So this is a handkerchief. It's not a tactical handkerchief because it doesn't look like it came from the Middle East. It's just a regular handkerchief. Um, this one happens to be camo. I've got red and blue. I think a white one too. I just fold it and put it in my back pocket. This particular belt, you see all these holes in it. Obviously it works as a belt. <clears throat> when it's new, it's stiff enough to be a halfway decent gun belt. Um, but once it gets supple like this, you know, it's almost time to replace this one. Um, this works as an improvised tourniquet. You know, every inch. I mean, if you're close, you can just really pull on it and then find something to cinch it down on. So this will work for immediate, uh, immediate tourniquet use until I can get to one of my actual tourniquets in the vehicle or in a bag, or you know, in my bag, um, my EDC bag, you know, wherever I might have another tourniquet. So this would be if I'm out and about without a backpack, I've at least got something that works well as a tourniquet. Um, a regular belt just doesn't work because you don't have all these holes. And the one, the, the belts that have all these holes that also have metal, I'm not entirely sure those would be good as a tourniquet because the metal might interfere with the ability to cinch it down. But uh, hopefully I never have to use one, but this will work in a pinch. So if I ever need a tourniquet, I probably need some of this other stuff too. So I've got a double bag because this bag, as you can see, is ready to be replaced. So what I've got here, two pair of blue nitrile gloves. These are Harbor Freight blue nitrile because I'm a Harbor Freight Ranger and quantity is better than quality. Um, you know, by all means get better if you want to. Then I've got this, uh, I believe this is the same stuff as the Stops Bleeding brand. Um, the one that's marketed by the doctor in Lou Ferrigno. But this is basically in concept the same thing as Quick Clot. It's a different powder, um, but it's, you know, the, the, the same stuff. Um, and here it says, Bleed Stop is FDA cleared for over-the-counter use to the public. FDA also cleared Bleed Stop for severe bleeding wounds by RX prescription. I don't know why it would be by RX prescription, but whatever. So basically what this is, is um, something kind of like starch. The, uh, the doctor who came up with this discovery, he's got a pretty good 30 minute video on YouTube that talks about how he, uh, I think, saved his son's leg with it and how they used it to stop arterial bleeding in a pig, which is a you know, major deal. I'm looking at the, the viewfinder backwards. 
So this stuff is uh, pretty good. Um, it doesn't work for small things. So I had a, uh, I used to have dogs, and one time I cut her nail too short, and I uh, tried to put some of this stuff on it. Didn't didn't help all that much. It kind of clotted up a little bit, but didn't do all that good. There is some other stuff I've seen. It looks like iron, iron powder. That worked really good in that circumstance. This is more for a packet. You know, you got some you know major trauma. You put this in the wound, and then you apply pressure and a tourniquet. That's what this is for. I've also got a quick clot advanced clotting gauze. Um, got it taped down here. This way it fits pretty well. But this is your actual quick clot stuff, quick clot brand. So if something happened, I would pack the wound. I'd fill the wound with this, pack it with this, cover it with this, tourniquet with this, uh, and protect my hands with this. I, actually, I think this is one glove. Yeah, so each glove is in here. This just makes it easier. So yeah, this is what I carry everywhere. Um, you know, when I have to go somewhere and dump my pockets, it uh, people certainly look at it kind of funny. But uh, you know, if, if I don't show it to them, they don't know. Which you know, that's the best way to do a lot of EDC stuff. You know, if you don't need it to be, uh, if you don't need to be overt, then by all means, be covert. So I'm going to call it quits for the day and uh, pack this stuff back up. Uh, make sure to tune in next time. Same bat channel, same bat, what was the other bat thing? I don't know. But uh, like, comment, subscribe if that's your thing. And, uh, you know, before too long I'll have pretty cool things like an intro, an outro, um, Patreon, maybe a PayPal donation. Maybe I'll get some AdSense going on. I don't know. I, I usually run ad blockers, so I think that's kind of... That would be an ethical dilemma to turn on AdSense when I run ad blockers all the time. And that's one thing we're going to cover later on in the channel is uh, digital defense. You know, this isn't all regular preparedness stuff. There's going to there's gonna be a lot of digital stuff. That's why it's the double entendre of prepare for it. You know, whether it's you know, digital preparedness, or if it's, um, you know, your regular bugging out plans, or just going to the woods, or, you know, whatever it is that you need to prepare for. Like Aldi. you got to prepare for Aldi. Bring your bags, bring your quarter, you got to be prepared for that sort of thing. And maybe I'll come up with a catchy, uh, catchy slogan. Like uh, like James Yeager had. What would be a good catchy slogan? Comment below. Oh hey YouTube, I just uh, I just re realized that I didn't show you guys a gun. Um, I don't actually normally carry a gun uh, most places because you know most times I'm going to work or going to the store um, right after coming from work. So. I don't normally carry a gun. Um, I am a proponent of the Second Amendment. I do have guns, obviously. Um, I, when I first started carrying, I would carry, I would open carry because I got a cheap Blackhawk holster. And I ran into more problems open carrying um, than I really wanted to deal with. And it was the wrong kind of problems. So I'd have cops come up and harass me about stuff. Only happened a couple times, but. I mean, it only has to happen a couple times before you get the you take the hint. Um, so, you know, I've got a concealed carry permit. I've got a concealed inner waistband, concealed carry holster. I occasionally conceal carry, but you know, I'm I'm never not armed. I just don't necessarily always have a gun on my person. But when I do carry, I usually carry a Glock because they take Glock mags. And that'll be on a different video. See, look, Glock. They take Glock Max. 
Comment below if you understand what I'm talking about.